Today, I visit the loneliest place in Europe. I've been driving for like two hours and I've seen five cars. It took me a long time to reach it. It's all the way north on the tip of Scandinavia and it's the least densely populated region on the whole European continent. Oof, it's still real winter out here, you guys. So it's lonely on the surface, but my question today is, What's it like to live out here? I can't imagine myself doing something else than this. In a place with so few people and so much space. Population density, 0.6 people per square kilometer. <laughs> I'm meeting a couple of locals and camping in pretty extreme temperatures to find out whether the least populated places are also the loneliest. Good morning. I just let Vilk out of the car for his morning wee and I looked at the thermometer. It's minus 20 degrees Celsius right now <laughs> and the real reason i knew it was really cold is because the hairs in my nose started freezing up as they generally do in temperatures like this <sighs> lapland is pretty wild <laughs> your hair after about 15 minutes outside in temperatures like this <laughs> very very cool no pun intended Finnish Lapland sits in the very north of Europe and has the lowest population density on the whole continent there's only five people per square mile here compare that to Paris with 53,000 people per square mile Europe as a whole with 87 people per square mile or even the USA with 93 people per square mile in Finnish Lapland, there's a whole lot of space to breathe. It's so cold outside that even with the heater going inside the truck and blowing hot air at me, it's still pretty chilly in here. So uh, safe to say this is where we're going to have breakfast today. I'm not going outside more than I need to. doing this trip in the winter in a truck like this it's it's doable but it, you don't just don't get much space inside right so I keep thinking god if only I had a van like if you did this trip in a van with all the proper winter gear you'd be so cozy and comfy it would be amazing should I get a van I'm not gonna get a van maybe I should should I get a van you know, in a van, I could have an actual shower and I wouldn't have to do this. Instead of washing my hair. So nice and fresh. These earrings have attracted a lot of comments with people being like, well, if you are not religious, if you're not Christian, why do you wear cross earrings? They're not crosses, they're little swords. You know, the entire point of this whole expedition for me was to kind of get away from it all, to just spend some time by myself, you know, go solo for a bit. And I can't imagine a better place to do that than in the least densely populated region in all of Europe, which is this, <laughs> Lapland in Finland. I've been driving for like two hours and I've seen five cars pass me on this whole road. It's just pretty wild. Five. You don't get places like this in Europe anymore. This is Finnish Lapland, one of the most northerly inhabited regions in all of Europe. 
and the world. Today, I start my journey in the remote town of Inari and drive to Levi in the south, where I'll meet a couple of really interesting people. But for now, I am still very much alone. As I've been driving throughout the Arctic, I've been seeing a lot of these black bin bags um, hanging off the poles on the side of the road and they look a little bit like the mentors from Harry Potter, but they're actually there to signal to drivers that there's reindeer in the area. There's a lot of reindeer here and they're generally quite skittish, I hear. And you definitely don't want to crash into one because you'd probably end up totaling your car so um yeah whoever hangs these up probably the reindeer herders thank you for being thoughtful <laughs> and giving me the mentor nightmares at night after a few hours of driving i made it to levy i have a date here with a very special someone okay i think this must be yanita's place it's been snowing pretty hard here in levy Apparently, for the last couple of days, Oof. still real winter out here, you guys. Very much so. My grandma's been texting me, telling me that it's like brewing weather, like plus 15 degrees Celsius back home. But this is still the real, real winter. This is Yanita. She is a Sami. Her and her family have lived in Finnish Lapland for generations. Yanita is a reindeer herder and runs a small tourist business here in Levy. I wondered what it's like for her to live in such a remote place. Do you sense that it's so few people? Yes, I love it. <laughs> oh yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, I like the nature, the animals, mm -hmm. and uh, the peace and quietness is something I like. But I do like meeting new people as well. Yanita is only 27 and she's been running her reindeer tour business for five years already, having started from nothing. She agreed to let me shadow her on an ordinary day at work. Today, I get to stay here with Yanita in the front sled, which is really exciting. We'll be leading the pack, I guess. Can I ask what made you want to work with the reindeer? What kind of led you to this decision? Well, I tried to find something else because everyone was like, you can't make your living with the animals. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult nowadays. I tried everything else. Nothing really felt as good as being with animals and I was like a reindeer. Mm. Sledding is something I feel really passionate, so. Yeah. And then the hurdling as well, I, I really love it, so. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, my family wasn't so supportive when I said I want my own business and. Really? No, and, and then uh, I was like, I want to do this sledding. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you're not able to do it. Like you're so small and woman and blah, blah, blah. And then I proved them wrong quite fast, like... Nice. Like, you can do everything you want if you just have the right mindset. 100%. That was kind of fun, but it's actually amazing to learn all about how Yanita has created this space, right? She built this entire track and enclosure by herself, with her own funds, her own energy, her own time. And it's so cool to see people coming here and just, you know, enjoying the fruits of her labor, these kids will probably remember this reindeer experience forever. Oh, they're so playful. Mm. Oh. You're very young, you know? Mm. Do you ever feel like you're missing out on something by being... Yeah, in a way sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, but then uh, I, I can't imagine myself doing something else than this. With the animals, I can work all day and I don't feel like, oh, this was not a good day. Yeah. Right. There's never a same day or boring day. Do you ever feel lonely? No. I have a lot of... I feel actually... When I have been traveling, I have felt lonely. 
here I have a community, I have neighbors, I have friends, I know most of the business owners. If I need help, I usually just call out someone or put it in social media and help arrives and mm. and like I have a good team with me now so I don't feel alone. I think that was the question weighing most heavily on me. Does the tiny number of people living here mean that it's the loneliest place? Soon, I'll be meeting a couple who moved to this lonely region from London, leaving behind their corporate careers and busy social lives. I wonder if they have a different perspective. Let's talk about something that seems to puzzle a lot of people about the way that I travel. Like, how do I travel to all these countries all the time without racking up insane roaming fees? Enter the partner of today's video, Holafly. You know when you travel abroad and you look at your phone and you get that little message from your network provider which warns you about the roaming fees that are about to start accumulating the longer you spend abroad? Well, Holafly's eSIM is the answer to that. You can buy it and manage it and install it online and it's super quick and easy. Before eSIMs became the norm, I spent a good few years buying traditional physical SIM cards wherever I traveled, which was not only really time consuming because you'd have to go to a phone shop every time, but also really difficult to navigate. With Holofly, I just buy and download my eSIM before my trip and then activate it once I'm in my destination. It's all online and it's super quick and easy, it takes about five minutes. So Holofly has made this even easier now. You can just buy your SIM via their app, which is available for iOS and Android. There's 24 seven customer service in several languages and you can also check your phone's compatibility with the eSIM before you buy it. I mean, most phones these days are eSIM compatible, but you just wanna check just in case. I've been using their Europe SIM, which connects you to the best networks and gives you unlimited data throughout Europe. I've used it in Italy, in Poland, in Finland, in Norway, in Sweden, even Morocco. And it's amazing just how well it has worked in even the most remote locations. The Holofly eSIM really saved my butt when I got stuck in the snow in Finland. That's coming up in the next episode. And without the eSIM, it would have been so much more difficult for me to upload all the videos from this entire winter expedition as quickly as I have. To me, Holofly is hands down the best way to stay connected if you're traveling internationally. You can now get 5% off your next eSIM or top up with this code. Check out all the details and links in the description box below. Are we gonna cook? Are we gonna cook? Come on, give me that. Oh, drop it, Vita, drop it. Yes, get it. Good boy. Yes, okay, drop it. Yes, good boy. Whee! Ah, okay. Special for tonight is going to be tortillas. I do still have my fridge in here, but given that it's been so cold, I um, I, don't I haven't been turning it on. I've, it's just been off because it's freezing. <laughs> so um, that saves me quite a bit of power. I mean, at this point, it's just a big cool box that is being kept cool naturally without any assistance from, um, from me or from the truck. Okay, here we've got some chili mayo rocket <gasps> hello me cheese yes you want a bone yeah okay what have we here Ooh, look at that oh yeah there you go place good boy buddy any kitchen utensils I don't even have a spatula so I'm gonna have to stir this with my finger oh nice and warm you know I got this frying pan like two years ago at a hardware store for maybe be eight bucks or something like that and I just want to say that I like nice gadgets as much as the next guy or gal but on this trip literally I have like nothing that's actual cooking gear I'm just trying to survive out here you know like you don't need all this stuff to get out and go on an adventure you really don't I'm so excited about this 
There's one more thing that's a little bit difficult to do in the winter in the Arctic Circle if you're traveling by car and that's um, keeping your water in a state of liquid rather than solid frozen. So this is what I do on most days. I just melt snow for water because I don't want to be you know, carrying around loads of plastic bottles from the store. And I do have a water container inside the truck but that's just for emergencies like if there's a blizzard or something and i can't melt snow that's when i would use that but yeah i can't refill water normally i used to have a lifesaver here but it's pointless because it would just freeze immediately and it would stay frozen until the end of the trip so cue in all the jokes about yellow snow it's your time to shine this has taken a little bit a little while like a half an hour i think okay it's um uh, lukewarm All right, this should make it a bit better. This is done. It gets so dark so quickly in the winter here. <laughs> My neighbors have arrived back from their excursion. Vilka is not pleased. Hey buddy, can you place? Can you place? so well inside this rooftop tent I don't know there's something about being like in a tent but it's warm inside you know because I've got my heater oh, it's so good it makes for such great sleep but I think it must have been really cold last night because look at this ice <laughs> yep yep <laughs> that's all frost okay free Minus 10 Celsius or about 12 Fahrenheit. I am about to go and meet a couple who have been calling this place home for the last six years. They moved here from London and I want to meet them and see why they chose, you know, Finnish Lapland of all places. This, you know, remote, empty region. <laughs> There's a surprise waiting for me there. Hagi and Paul, who run this tiny guest house called Arctic Foxfires in Levy, invited me to try out their private Finnish spa. This is so exciting, pardon my hair, but Hagi and Paul invited me to check out their Arctic spa, which is this beautiful Finnish sauna and a hot tub and a lot of snow. So that's what we're gonna do now. A little 20 minutes of relaxation and my first shower in about six or seven days. <laughs> Let's go in. Can you believe this? Oh my god, this is like already my favorite place in all of Finland. I suppose living in the least densely populated place in Europe has its advantages. <laughs>
but you know, since we are in Finnish Lapland in winter and there's a lot of snow around, I feel like there's one thing that I really need to do to kind of get initiated into the local landscape and that is um, get really, you know, up close and personal with the snow. <laughs> so let's do that. Well, I think that's a good enough initiation into Finnish Lapland. Aggie and Paul, the owners of this place, invited me to join them for breakfast in their gorgeous home. I asked them how they ended up here, given that their lives used to look very different. Long story short, I wanted to be here in a glass igloo for my 40th birthday. So Aggie bought the flights, I researched where to stay, and we came to Levy, and then... We look at each other after one day and we were like, you just knew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel lonely out here? So when we first moved here, we were renting in the village near the airport and there's a bus stop there. And on that sign, there's some information about the area. And it says Kitila, the municipality mm -hmm. we live in, population density, 0.6 people per square kilometer. <laughs> God, there is no one here. It wasn't easy, obviously, because yeah. you arrive to a country, you don't speak language, you don't know anyone, you, you, you have no idea if your idea for, for your living here will succeed. You sure. have no idea, it, mm. you can fail. But it never felt wrong or we never regret. How would you say that your quality of life has changed since moving out of London? I used to get anxiety going into the office. If I were first cycling in, it wasn't so bad, but if I drove in, mm -hmm. I would feel like some anxiety in my chest. Then I would have like this nervous tick in my eye from like tiredness and That's things. That's old age, Paul. No, I know, it was <laughs> happening in my thirties. So it was, it was tough. And then we come here and all that goes away. Wow. And yeah, we work pretty hard. It's physical because, yeah. you know, just even, walking around in the snow as you know now it, it, mm -hmm. is tricky because it just saps your energy like on a sandy beach yeah and just doing anything takes more time but everything feels more fulfilling yeah. if you love what you do you never work mm. and it's not true yes yeah. you work much more <laughs> so but the difference is you go to bed with smile you wake up with smile yeah that's that's and you 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 have this happiness that you're making the decision. Yeah. Aggie and Paul completely turned their lives around just a few short years ago by moving out here. Now they're running their guest house and spa, and it's obvious to me that they absolutely love being out here. I need to show you something, you guys, because Aggie and Paul treated me like royalty and they gave me homemade jams that they made themselves, which is just so kind of them. And homemade cake. Mm, which I can't wait to bite into. What a dream. It's funny how in the least populated place in Europe, people didn't really strike me as lonely. Everyone I met who lives here talked about purpose, fulfillment, community. Maybe in places with so few people and so much space, you end up finding something that's easily lost in the crowded busyness of the city. Just maybe, with all that space around you, you actually get to be.